Hey, it's July 27th and Teach is on the board. I'm going to move myself over here so it's a much easier place for me to be located. And of course, I'm definitely going to fold this hand. We're going to try to play a quick 50 cent tournament here. Bankroll building. See if we can play as tight as we can for as long as we can. But if we do play a hand, we want to play it very aggressively. We're not going to take chances today in this demonstration. Even though I would play 5-6 in position. And even though I would play the 9-10s and hands like that. We're going to be playing premium hands for the most part. And hopefully have position. And see how we can do. And see if anybody else at the table can knock out our opponents for us. There is no chat available, uh, no chat room available for this one. I'm testing out a full screen, so I apologize in advance that you won't be able to, to chat or I won't be able to see it or anything like that. Here we have the first hand, and we have somebody eliminated. So that's one of our competitors gone. So this might be boring for a lot of people. But when you're first starting out, this is what you have to do. You have to play solid poker. And when I mean solid, I mean don't throw your money away. Especially with $1,200 as your starting uh, stack. And it's pretty fast um, as to the, the rounds going up. I don't know if this will mess up the video or not. Let me just check real quick. Okay, let me show you the structure, 20, 30, 40, 60, but six minute rounds is very fast, very fast. So we're going to be up into that 75, or 50, 100 pretty quick, and then 100, 200 before you know it. And then the game's going to end suddenly because people are just going to throw their money around. Here we got another match going on right here, and I wasn't putting players on hands, so I was talking to you. But you can see they have $800 left, and most of it's going in this pot here. There's a nine. I don't know what the other person thought he could have had, but that person will be out before long. That's two hands, almost two people eliminated. Why should you do anything in a situation like this? You don't care who gets the chips. You get your chips later on. You just want people eliminated. You want to get down so you're in the money. Top three. Remember, it's usually 50, 30, and 20%. That's how they pay the money out. 50%, 30, and 20. So if you get 20%, you're probably getting back just a little over what you paid to play. So that's not very good. If you get second place and you get 30%, well, 30% is a little bit more. You're probably almost making double your money here. So it's not too bad. And of course, first place, it's going to give you 50% of the prize pool. You're really going to get about four or five times what you paid in this particular case. Sometimes it's a lot more than that. So you always want second, go for first. But third, that's consolation prize. At least you keep you playing. But you're really not wanting to settle for third place. So when you get down into the final three, you want to make an effort to stick around. Let the other two battle if you have to a little bit. And if the one chip, chip one stack is, is low, just get them out and get second. And once you got second locked up, you know you got good guaranteed money. And go for the win. Get more aggressive. These guys are just throwing the money around because the limits are low. What happens when the limits are low? Now, see, now I like to play this hand. And you've heard me in some of my other videos. I'm not going to play it here because I'm... I'm trying to act like a real nit today. And I would have a decent redraw here for a four, possibly run a runner flush, but $90 in a pot, I expect this guy to bet at least half. He gets a quick call. I would be gone if I was in this hand right now. And I think he's going to bet more than 100. Yeah. Quick call. Now, Doom Kitty, if he's got it, yeah, he's going to bet out into the person saying, I've got the king or the ace. More, uh, more apt to have just a, so he was in the blind, probably a, a naked ace. When I say naked ace, 
I mean, he probably had a rag ace. He probably had something like ace four, ace two, something like that. And the ace just happened to be a heart, and he stuck around. Maybe if you remember the first three cards were on the board, maybe the other alternate card was one of the pairs, but paired one of the other three cards, and that's why he stuck around and then caught the, the fourth heart and then the fifth heart. At least that's what his betting indicated. He made us believe that. If you want to play it full flush, uh, go to my Teach GPL page there on Twitch and just scroll down, hit that link and uh, join. Uh, they'll be happy to have you. And then also join at heartbeatpoker.net because they sponsor in that group a whole bunch of free rolls and money added and fun events. Last Friday night they had a crazy game. What that means, crazy game is the top 10 get paid in a crazy order so 10th might be first place money ninth might be third place money eighth might be sixth place money first was 10th place money so i know somebody in australia named uh well we won't mention his name but he won the whole thing he won first place but actually he won 10th place he couldn't get rid of seven so he kept winning with it and so it's a kind of fun event you might want to try that out and they also uh, stream uh, music of ASI uh, radio. So join a link and uh, let me know what your name is there and I'll look for you when I'm playing there at Full Flush or when I'm doing one of these videos. You might be part of one of these videos. So once you join up, send me a name. Just alspath at alspath.com. All right. So the blinds have finally reached me. Again, it's just a boring thing. Now, that's a min raise there, but not very much. And you're going to get call or something. I'm not going to waste my time. Even if two five or two nines or anything flop, I'm just going to save all my money to when I have something good. And listen, you may play exactly that way. And then when you have something good, you may bet it may be incorrectly or maybe correctly. And then somebody... You can't get rid of gets lucky and beat you. I'm not telling you you're going to win every single time if you play that way. I'm telling you you improve your chances to win that way. There it is. Full house. Another person is down to $500. Doom Kitty. Appropriately named. Again, no interest in playing these kind of cards. But when I play something, I got to play it pretty strong. And they're going to know since I haven't played a hand. That I got good cards, or I should have good cards. Now this started about, oh, I'd say seven minutes ago. So let's see how long one of these lasts as well. So thirty is a very weak bet to be betting. That's kind of like a feeler bet to see where, where I'm at, you know, see what, what's going on. Now he feels the same way. So he's saying he's got a piece of it. He may have just a jack. He may have something like jack uh, nine, jack queen. Ten jack. He had the full house. So he was pretty confident after he hit that uh, turn card and filled up. Oh, now we have one. Two, three, we haven't lifted a finger. Let's let them do the heavy lifting for us. We don't care. We do have to add chips at one point. Now, some of you might say, well, this is you were on the button. You had ace deuce. You'd have flopped an ace. Straight redraw. I don't like that hand. I don't even like it worse now. I have two pair because any four comes into play. The person that's more likely to have the four is Danny because he's in the blind. I don't, he could have the clubs. I doubt if he has the clubs. I, I think he's saying he's got the four. I would uh, I would have raised him, of course, if I had a flush. I don't think he backed into a flush there. There was one day that over at Poker Pages, they used to um, have another site called Bugsy's Club. Some of you might have remembered playing at Bugsy's Club. 
So I joined their uh, Sunday event. They had an event for like uh, a dollar and it got like 10,000 people or something like that. I, I can't remember exactly the details on it. But I went post and fold the whole event and I finished in 14th place. I didn't play a hand. I wasn't there. I finished 14th place and I didn't play one hand. You got 10,000 chips to start. That's what it was. It was 10,000 chips to start. The dollar entry and I don't know. They probably had four or 500 people. Got my statue. Again, I like that hand, but I can't play that hand today. A lot of calling stations here. That guy in the big blind could have raised right then and picked up hundred and something bucks, but he didn't. Again, this guy had a two pair before and then a full house and bet only the mid bet. And he may just very well have the king in this situation. Usually people that bet here don't have the king. They usually have like ace five. They usually have like a pair of sevens. If he comes over the top, he's saying he has the king. Oh, pair of threes, not sevens. There's the ace five down there. Okay, limit's going up again. Easy to fold, six two. You notice that everybody's in the pool, almost every hand, spending money, except us. When I say us, I figure you're part of my team today, so you're either rooting for me or rooting against me. So it's us against them. We just got to beat the sh <clears throat> You got to beat them. Nope. So if you've been marking down my hands since the beginning, I don't know if you've seen a pan that it was really playable. Sure, I like the 4-6 of clubs. Sure, I like the 3-5 of clubs. But they're really not playable hands. Let's be honest. You're just gambling and, and you're trying things when you do that. And you might get people out. And you might continuation bet and win a hand. But you're spending money on, on nothing. We really haven't had aces, kings, queen. We've had no, no pairs. We've had no ace, king, no ace, queen, no ace, jack. Not even ace, ten. Not even ace, nine suited. We haven't had a suited... We haven't had a connector um, like 9, 10, so we haven't had anything, and we've been around the board now twice. So figure out about 20 hands out of those group, out of the 20 groups, we haven't had a playable hand. Now if you just do the exercise at home, take a deck of cards and deal it out 10 handed, face up around the table, just look and see how many hands are really playable or not. You'll be surprised. Do it five times. And you'll come to some real big conclusions that way. It's a very good exercise at home. It's just face up, deal out 10 hands, and go around the table and say, this one would fold, fold. This might call or raise, fold, fold, fold. You'll see why you have to raise to get certain other people out that have kind of okay cards. out of. You can't let them limp. It's a very good homework assignment. Oh, my goodness, I get to play. And I hit the top pair, but no kicker, folks. Now, in in my regular cash games and tournaments, I might check raise with a hand like this. You know, I get these these forty. I'm I'm just gonna get out of the way here. But I normally would check raise in that situation. I and usually when I see two small bets like that, uh, you know, they're just putting some money in on it. On Hopefully, they're going to improve. He says he improved, and he says he improved more. So, if if Figaro has a 7, it would have to be probably A7 or a suited 7, like King 7 suited. But A7 would be the most logical. 3-7 suited is not logical, but he did have the 7. He said he had the 7. So, he's cleaning up this board. And I just can fold. Again, I would have got my butt waxed by a seven there. But I think if I would have done my check raise, like I said, I don't know with three seven and, and the board the way it was with just the seven, if he'd have seen the turn seven. I really don't think so, because my check raise would have been big enough 
but he's got a lot of chips and that's the other part of it that's how deep somebody is and if they're deep they give you some loose looser calls even with a pair so you just got to be beware of you're looking about you're always looking about what they bet and what's behind them how much is behind them how much is behind this bet when he makes this bet how much does he have left what can he do damage you got always have to know at your table whether you're playing live or online how much money your opponents have because opponents with shorter stacks as you'll see later on as we move along here tend to do certain things that are predictable it's a very coordinated or wet board you know that anybody with an ace or king of clubs is sticking around there might be somebody's already made made a, a flush so you know you just got to be very careful in that situation One fifty into a two hundred dollar pot is a good bet. That's a good three quarter bet. This one should be around four hundred or three fifty. He's gonna go the full pot. This guy can't call for five hundred. He's got to go all in. See, you have to look at the stack behind and just figure that out. There's your flush. There's your crapo hand, and that's four people eliminated. We haven't played a hand yet. That's what I'm demonstrating today, playing tight and seeing if you can get down to where you make a, an action. You know, it's $40 is the, is the big blind now. Divide that into my $1,000 there. How many times does that go? All right. It's going to go at least 30 to almost, almost 30 times, 12, uh, maybe 25 times. I got 25 big blinds left. I'm not in any panic mode. I haven't received my share of fair cards yet. You know, I just, I'm just hanging out waiting for me to get my turn. Patience and discipline. You learn those first, then you learn skill, and then you get experience. That's how you become a better poker player. Whether you're playing a 50 cent game, whether you're playing a $10 game or a $33 game, you've got to apply all the same strategies. You've got to do the same kind of things. Sorry, now we're up at sixty dollars. Now, take the six. You know, look at the sixty and 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 think about that. And, and how many big blinds do I have now? All of a sudden, we went from forty to sixty. Now, sixty goes into a thousand eighty-five dollars. How many times? Anybody out there with a quick answer? Hmm. About 18 times. So we went from 25 down to 18 in six six minute periods over. And then it's going to go to 80. And then we're going to go down to just about 12 big blinds. So within the next couple of minutes, I got to get a hand. Or otherwise, I'm going to become a short stack under 10 big blinds. And then my only move is all in. That's it. Still haven't had a playable hand, though, have I? No, I did not contact the site and tell them to give me crap. This is what you usually get as well. If I had my druthers in any tournament, I'd, I'd really like to have uh, my good cards towards the middle and towards the end. I'd, I'd rather not have any good cards up front. That's a very small bet into a 180 putt. I, I think he's he's either got the five or he's got a draw. I don't think he had the nine there. I think he would have bet more. Same thing again. He might have a two, though. See if he ups the bet to 420. Nope. Let's, say the, let's stick with the five. Oh, he had the nine, and he didn't bet it bigger. That's unusual. Oh my goodness. That's called a flat tire. What's a jack for? A flat tire. Uh oh, I might see a flop. Heads up. 
That's so good. That's so good. I don't think he has a club. Anybody think he has a club? Come on. I want to pay 150 to split the $150 pot with him or take the $150 to $200. I don't think it's worth the money. But now I am down under a thousand. Ooh, look at that one. Six ninety for a fifteen hundred dollar event. They have some nice events here and they've changed their structures and they're even getting more stuff coming. I'm not gonna pay the thirty here. But I can tell you this, the blinds are gonna go up to eighty here pretty soon, and I'm just about at eleven big blinds. Got a few people out early, and now we've stalled with only four gone. And my six would have held up there. See? No. You know when you're running really bad? is when even when you fold bad cards, you don't get flops that hit the bad cards. You know how sometimes you're you're running bad and, and, and then you throw away a card and like seven four and then that flops. We're we're not even hitting the flop when we're throwing cards away. That's how bad it is. But that's okay. You can't change your frame of mind. It's your mindset that has to be good. It has to be in the game at all times. Keep watching what people are doing and hope the opportunity comes. If it doesn't come, it's not your fault. It's not my fault I got all these bad cards. I can't take the blame for that. There's not really many hands I could have tried things. I could have tried the one check raise, I guess. But then again, that was with a 10-4. It's horrible. Now, this guy has a hand he would bet. Now, so you have to assume that Whistler, Wilster, Wilster, Wilster didn't have much of anything. So don't bet 60 into a guy like that with two big cards because he might have done something with a big card. Bet the 120 into him and take the pot down. You're lucky he got the win there with the 60 bucks. Just watch your opponents, you know. All right, you're all thinking first hand to play, you got two painted cards. Eh. We're only six-handed, but I think I need a little bit better than Queen Jack. If I was a little lower on my stack size, yeah, I'd probably do something with the Queen Jack. I might even push. I might even shove. You're all looking at the flop and the turn, and you're saying, okay, what was Al's decision? How does it turn out that he doesn't have a straight draw? He does have a a flush draw, although it's only to the queen. And then a black seven or something comes off. And... Nope, it doesn't look like he's playing. There used to be a site called Doyle's Room that you could, or and you could, uh... oh, here we go, folks. So I could limp in here, or I could go all the way. I want somebody to take me on and double me up. I do not want to give them a chance. If they beat me, they beat me. Okay, fair enough. Doyle's room had a rabbit. You could hit the rabbit and you could always see the next card. Uh-oh, all of a sudden Al got in the line. Now it's going to look like I'm trying to steal two hands in a row. You just need somebody to put in a $60 or $80 bet there. Come on, Figaro, you're the guy. Be the guy. You're being the guy. Okay, now some of you might say, you should have played that and saw a flop and see what you can do. And, you know, when you go all in a couple of times in a row, somebody doesn't believe you. I was hoping to get somebody to not believe me there. And $40, 280 you're talking about 
almost seven to one on the odds. I don't like the cards. I don't like the position, but I'm getting so much. I got to see if I can flop, you know, a queen two or two twos or something like that. It's, it's worth the $40. And that I was closing the betting. That means that was the last one that I didn't have to worry about somebody else raising it afterwards. Now I think he'll bet probably a hundred. Nope, he didn't. So nice card. Put the nine out there. Not today. Okay. Uh-oh, somebody finally decided to raise it up, and he's out of position. So a person that's out of position, or somebody that's in the blind usually that raises, you need to put them on a bigger hand. So let's think he's got, well, at least ace-queen suited or better. So let's let's just say he's got kings and, and one of the type hands he's on. Now, if he doesn't have the king of spades, he'll check. Boom. If he's got, if he bets here, then he may he may have made the flush on the turn. I doubt it. Oh, he is going to bet there. Is he betting just with the ace to have one, two, three, four, five, or does he have a spade? That was unusual. Another good hand here. So let's play this differently. Let's play this. Let's see if we can get somebody to spend $355. A lot of people do this. They put the five, they put the, the point because they sit there. A lot of chips come out there. It looks like a big bet. People that are short stay. Watch sometimes. You'll see. They'll do that. Not a good hand. Those. So it didn't matter if I put the 400 out there, if I put the I went all in. I wasn't going to get a call in those situations. Yes, if I were to put a lower amount, if I would have went two and a half times the big blind and put out uh, money, I would have put out about $200 and probably got a call or from especially Figueroa who's got, you know, 3500 But then if I don't hit an ace or a queen, then I'm stuck in it hand. I have to continuation bet again. It's going to cost me more and I could lose a lot of money, which are precious chips at this point. Different strategies. People will take different lines. I'm not here to tell you which way you should go. You decide for yourself. Try it sometimes. Try it the one way where you let somebody in the pot when you don't have a big pair. And try it when you have a big pair and you let somebody in the pot. And then try it the other way. You've got to experiment. And the best place to do it is at the lower limits. So you can learn what the reaction to the play, from the players are. Don't go up to something over your head or pay a lot of money and, and, and be testing out new theories. Anybody with a comment or a question, please send it to me at alspath at alspath.com. I'll get back to you as soon as, as I can. If you want to add me to your Skype, it's al.spath, S-P-A-T-H. We can talk about something on there as well. Anybody that's looking for lessons or private shadowing, again, mention TEACH as, you, as a uh, promotion code. I'll take 25% off the first two sessions. Of each one of the sessions, that is. So we got a lousy hand, lousy position. Nobody's raised, but so we could check. Now we can check out. If you all would just, if anybody that's listening to this or anyone who's watching right now, just as a test, you see that bet for 280, close your eyes and concentrate on that 280. Concentrate on the 280. Your eyes should be shut right now. Now tell yourself how many people at the table, uh, the people left are under a thousand dollars without looking. See if you got it right and open your eyes. You got to, you have to remember the stack sizes of your opponents. Just like when you're playing live and you look at your cards, you got to remember the cards and the suits. You don't go back and look at your cards when you're playing live. Don't give tells. 
but you need to know who you're playing against and what to expect from the person there that has 9-10 and has uh, less than nine big blinds left. But here it's $50 with the 9-3 into 350. I'm getting what, uh, two, four, six, seven to one, but the cards are so bad, I can't do it. $50 is a lot of my money at this point. It's, it's, it's more than 5% of my stack. And when you, I get up, when, I, when you have to give a 5% or more of your stack, you better have something or some outs or something to, to get there. In other words, you can hit something and you can improve. I don't think I could improve much with the 9-3. Sure, a 3 and a 9 may eventually come off, but I can't take that chance. I don't have that luxury of wasting money. So I, I, can't, I can't do that at this juncture. Okay. Ace queen for the third time. It could be a good omen. It could be a bad omen. Uh, if I go to the pot, that's 350. I don't really want to call it here. I'll, th I'll take the 100. I'll take that 250, or I'll take a race with somebody. That's not a problem with me. Okay, we got one guy thinking about it. He may come, may come. Nope, that's okay. Well, that's five hands that we've played. We've got no action at all. Queens, ace, queen, three times, I think it was. Maybe four, but I think three. Where do we sit? 1475. Not comfortable. But not yet in jeopardy. Although at 150 around for the blinds, there. Remember, I just told you. Expect the. That's what he's. He's a short stack. He's going to go all in. Oh, give him a king. Oh, give him a king. I was hoping this guy would get a. A straight and knock him out. Now, now Danny is below. He's going to push all in. Expect it. If he plays, he's got to push. So he's he's probably going to push. I would push before it was my big blunt. It cost me 100. I always like to push under the gun where I'm first in, and I get both the blind monies as part of a contribution to me if I win. If I'm on the blind money, I'm not getting back as much. So if we look at his stack and we look at this, the big blind, one, two, three hands before he's the big blind, and I don't know if the blinds will go up before that, but I would expect him to push at that point before he gets to, to here. And so I can expect him, if he's going to play this, to push against me. Okay. Let's hope he has ace-jack. Let's hope he doesn't have a pair and outbeat. He's got a pair, so we're going to need help. Going to need help. And we're down to the last one. And we don't get there. And he beats us. But he had a great hand. And that's okay, folks. We kept going in. If, if we played that any other way, we'd still lose our money. Maybe we can get away from it on the flop. But that's not what we're here to do. We're here to double up and get into the thing, and I didn't do it. But I gave you some techniques. I showed you how to get there. Let's see what, before we end this, uh, I don't think you're concerned about these guys winning or losing. But this guy is, is all in here. So let's see if he gets a call. He's got the chips now. He does give him the loose call. Got queens back to back. A five is what he needs. A five or an ace only will win it. That won't win it for him. Hey, this has been Al Spath. It's the 27th of July. I hope you had a good day. Please email me at alspath at alspath.com if I can be of any assistance or answer your questions. This